Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. This time we're going to be going sea fishing. We're going to look for a species that's been coming on the increase, both in numbers and in size, which is quite unusual because there's a lot of pressure on our sea fish around the UK. But this species, giant flatfish, fights hard, quite predatory, good scrapper, looks pretty. Could know some more, really, could you? A bit like me. Anyway, it's called the Undulate Ray. Down off the south coast where I fish a lot, they seem to be more and more prevalent, really. You used to get a lot of thornback rays, probably, you now where can I say, probably to the east, towards Dover, there'd be a lot of thornback rays, and they work their way down and spread down around the Isle of Wight area. But around the Isle of Wight now, both sides, east and west, on the south coast of England, there seem to be an increase, in fact, indeed there is, of the undulate ray. As I say, they are a big ray, a good scrapper, you need a very basic rig to catch them, and this is all you need. The most basic of rigs here can be made up as a single running ledger rig using, I'm in this case using 60 pound mono for my trace. More than enough, you can get away with 30, but I like 60 because you're gonna be fishing the same area where you could get big fish, bull huss, they've got abrasive teeth, taupe, sharp teeth, or indeed conger eel, powerful jaws. So, what you're going to need is a good sized barrel swivel here. A bead, obviously, does not have to be white. That's all I've got at the moment. A hook like, this one happens to be an Eagle Claw O'Shaughnessy 6 -0. You can be used any hook size 6 -0 if you want, a little bit smaller. But that's a good size to take a good bait, because these fish are predatory. A running boom with a clip onto which you attach your lead. I'll show you how simple this is to tie up. Okay, on with the most important thing. Alas, these binoculars. Yes, sir. -y. Don't get old, because once your eyes go, it can be a real pain tying knots without them. I'll be using 60 pound mono here. Let's say on an average, I think for rays, there. Three to four feet of leader. Pull another six inches off to allow for tying the knots. A pair of cutters, just cut it off. Now, some people like to use really long traces, but in fast tides, and the undulate ray will live over, fast tide flows and run over sandbanks and stuff like that. If you have a great big long trace like this, and I'm not you know, decrying that they do in fact catch, but if you have a long trace like this, the lead's here, your bait's back there, it's flapping and flailing around in a fast current, maybe spinning, it's up off the bottom. Now these are predatory flat fish, if you like, they're skate, they're a ray, they're along the bottom, they're hunting, they're looking for stuff on the bottom, which they come over the top of and smother. They don't leap up off the bottom like a pollock or a bass and grab a lure. They're looking for live fish, dead fish, crustaceans, crabs, shellfish, anything like that. So that's why by using a three or four foot trace, it will be pinned to the bottom or very close to the bottom in faster tides. Get your barrel swivel here, and I would tie just a regular, Tucked blood knot. That's all you need. Of course, you might have another knot you're favouring at the time. By all means, use it. I'm just using a plain one to tie this. I'm not even bothering to tuck it. A tucked blood knot generally means it doesn't slip. Snip it off, but I don't snip it off, leaving you know a millimetre left there. I leave two or three mils left in case anything moves. That's still got a little bit of distance to go before it actually slips right through. We don't even want to go there, do we? We don't want to talk about not slipping. By the way, if you get a little curl on the end of your line, that's down to whoever tied the swivel or the hook. Okay, dead simple, this rig's so ridiculously simple. Hook. These eagle claw ones have a great big eye. Even I can see these to get through. Makes a change, doesn't it? I've used these for years and years. Cheap and cheerful. Well, cheap and cheerful because I used to import them when the dollar was good. Now, unfortunately, the dollar's horrific. They're not so cheap. But Eagle Claws, a good mate. No, I'm not paid to say that. I'm just telling you that I did used to use a lot of Eagle Claws, a pretty good hook. But O'Shaughnessy is the design. It's a dead plane. Look, just a straight plane. It's not offset there. You see the hook's not offset like that. A dead straight basic hook. And one thing I will say is you can do it with the cutters. Just where that barb is, just nick that barb down. Just crush it. If you've got pliers, crush it with pliers. 
that one in fact popped off. You heard the little click, hopefully, on the camera. Now, I snapped off a huge piece of metal here, just dropped on the table. But listen, there's still a tiny tag of barb there. But when you're setting the hook on a fish, people think you've got to just get the hook in. No, no, you, the, the, the point to get that a good hook hold has to come right round and pull from that bend, from that bend there. So to pop over or make a hole large enough, it's not just the point you have to make, the hole has to be from the base or tip of the barb of any hook. And some of them are basic. It's a big, big barb. That means you've got to pull a lot to get it through. And of course, if it's not popped past the barb, you might lose the fish. I'm quite happy fishing barbless. This one, I would call it a semi-barb, you can see. Close it down. That basically is your rig. Okay, but the gentleman said, put a hook up there, Graham, and you can pretend that's a rod up there. He's right, I still haven't done it. I've just been out filming Mike's bushcraft all week, so I haven't had time. This pretend is my real line. Onto that you slide a little, I'm gonna call this, I think they call them zip sliders. Look, they slide up and down like this. That's a little mini boom. You can use longer booms. If you want to use longer booms, use longer booms. Look, there's a longer boom. Still got the same, see that, look, two or three times as long, or even longer than that if you want. And then, you slide on one bead, okay? This is going up to the rod top. I then tie on my trace, which I've made earlier. This is great for any fish, do you know what I mean? Just any fish. Basic, quick, simple is the way to catch most fish. Most fish, you don't need all complicated stuff. I don't find anyway, but I'll catch you on one or two. Now, make sure you put on any knot, a bit of saliva, because when you put it down, it stops the mono, Ooh burning or cutting into itself. Snip off the tag end, leaving three or four mil tag and that basically is your rig. Here's a real line there. Now let's make this look a bit better. It's got a little clip on there. Put whatever required lead for the day, slide it on. There it is. Now that is the rig in its entirety. Hopefully you can see all this. A sliding running boom, a B, so that this boom doesn't jam over there. If the boom jams on top of the knot, and we're putting the bead there to stop that, if it jams on top of the knot, it might fix. So as a fish is swimming away, he could feel that lead drag in, feels the resistance, drops the bait. You don't want that. You want it to pull away like this, not feeling any resistance. And then when you strike, this slides down to the hook. That's the idea of a free running boom like this. And the bead is there to stop. You can see that hopefully, look, it goes, I got these from a, a I think it was like, don't say that, I think it was a dress shop. I just happened to be in there looking for my size. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? Surely. Get these from like a dress shop, jewelry shops. Okay, so I've been to jewelry shops as well. <laughs> they're cheap, they're cheerful. They have lots of sequins and beads in these places. And the ladies love selling men all these beads. Can't think why. There you go, cheap way of doing it. Swivel, there's my 60 pound trace. Here comes the hook. There's the hook, I put my bait on, and away I go. That's the rig done. It's really easy, quite efficient for many species of fish, but for the amulet ray, if you fish squid, mackerel, pouting, fishy baits, big chunks, you can have some good action. Here's some action Mike had out on our boat. High sea drifter, back last summer. He's lucky or what? Is it lucky? Or worse, is it skill? It was one of those glassy calm, rare English days, and what has our hero got here? Oh, it's a big fish, no, oh no. It's a dogfish. Well, listen guys, it's a start. Guys, we are at the witching hour, giving it literally the last 15 minutes. And something big is on it, it's pulling line off. What is this? What Sorry, is 30 this? 30 pound blank. 30 pound blank, and it's a head, you know me... it's a big fish when you get a boom. Boom, big head shapes. Oh, I've, got, I've got to take on this one then. Have you? Yeah, unless he's tangled up. Let me switch, oh, switch this off and, and get the rods cleared. Guys, we've got the fish here. It's definitely my PB undulate ray. Unbelievable. Look at the size of that. That's a big one. That is a dustpan lid. Look at it. What a beauty. There's a fish on here. Is there? There's a fish on this one. <laughs> oh no, there's a fish on that one as well. I've got to put is it down. It? Yeah. It's probably a Let's, Let's get, get the ray. Now, what's he done go through the. We're gonna need a net, I think, for this. I think, we're, I think we might net this one. Yeah. What a fish! Is that, on the, is that on the one good hook on the rusty hook? That is probably the rusty hook, but do you know what? 
Dad was uh, sunbathing a bit with the yeah. top off, and actually he just said, I'm going to put that top on because I have a feeling it's good luck within seconds of putting it on. Yeah, Wayne knows this, what it's like. Wayne knows went. my superstitions. This just went. Let's get the net. Oh, awesome, awesome. Look at the size of the net. The rain is pretty much bigger than the net. Bigger than the net. He's going to go, he's going to go. Oh, stay on, please stay on, please stay you on. Pull a bit, those undulates. Please stay on. Yeah, these rays in this current as well, the strong tide. I don't think it's gonna fit. Yeah, look at that. Watch the net snap now. Whoa, look at that. Don't lose the teeth that in the has swinging That's got some weight to it. I tell you what, that's got some weight to it. Well, in doubles, I'd say. Oh, that's a stunning ray. PB. Yeah. We're not gonna wear it probably because we don't have scales, do we? No, if it's double. I saw a rusty pair of uh, funny things that I brought in. Oh, what a beauty, people. That has got some weight to it. I don't, don't have any scales. 13 ish, 14. 13, 14 pounds. We're also arguing over species. We reckon it could be an undulate with the markings on the flank there. Yeah, here. But also, it's got the thorns it's on the back. It's got the thorns, yeah. So to me, I'm saying thorn back, but. No, I don't no. Know my race I know exactly what it is. A thorndulate. Thorndulate. It's a thorndulate species. Right. Either way, guys, I'm absolutely chuffed. What, what? a stunner. Great end to a great day early, isn't it? Unbelievable. You know, it's been. It's been Fish, we just, we've moved, we've all the right moves when we've moved boat, re-anchored, it's been brilliant. What an absolute beauty. Yeah, animal fish. My PB, whatever it is, undulate or fawn back, thorn it's my PB yeah. ray. Yeah, it certainly is. It's you guys tell us what ray. it is and then I'll know. Exactly. Awesome. And we lost a smoothie on the telescopic rod as well. Yeah, we did. Probably last fish of the day, we don't know yet. That little bream is, but we'll put him back in a really good day. What an absolute, he wants to go already, look. He's away. What a awesome fish. Go, 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 go. Oh. Brilliant. Get in. OMG. I just if this not... thing comes in the boat, what is it? <laughs> you won't like it. I'm just... If this comes in the boat, I am definitely getting out. What is it? Has anybody watched that program? Deadliest catch. Oh, is it a crab? It is some uh, big ass crab. Oh, no, what is it? Cow. It's huge. Ah, oh, spider oh, crab is man. that? I don't know what it is. Oh, sod that. You can do that one. Look at that thing. <laughs> I thought that rob was bending. Look at the size of it. You picking that up? Well, tentatively. Look oh, at God, that. the size of that. That weighs Look something. Look at the claws. That is disgusting. <laughs> I wonder how much it's worth a crab sandwich. I've got to get a photo of that. So let me get this right. Mike gets a really big undulate array and I get... a crab? It gets worse. It gets worse. He gets another one on my... Up tied rod. It's not fair. It's really not fair. He's got another one on. <laughs>
I can't take any more. He's catching number four. I can't take any more. He's catching number four. I can't take any more. He's catching number four. Yeah. Right. Number four. Yeah, big one. He's big as big as they are, I think. I'm gonna weigh that. That is a big ass. I'm gonna weigh that. Female. Well, as you can see, guys, I'm on to another decent, decent hundred, mate. This is a beauty. Whoa, hold on. He's got some claws on in this one. Oh, that's a dead fish, man. Look at that. We're dragging on the anchor now as well, so we're going to call it a day. Can't say that we've not had a red letter day or good fishing. Four double figures. Unbelievable. Yeah. Look at that fish in the sun. Four double figure undulates. I lost the smooth out at the boat. About eight to ten black bream. Dogfish. Rass. Rass. Just all sorts. Everything. It's been brilliant.